Hey everyone, and welcome to my Procreate demo for the piece I call Flower. Now this was really fun because this was the first thing that I had decided to seriously do in Procreate 4. Um, I was in the beta as so many others were, and uh, but I didn't have a lot of time to really play with it because I was worried about certain things exporting because I wanted to still work on the uh, Village Corrupted stuff for you guys. Um, so on the... Uh, one day I just decided to take a break from A Village Corrupted and do something for fun and start exploring some of the new stuff in Procreate 4, and that's what you got here. I'll do more of a breakdown of Procreate 4 in the future, um, because I didn't really necessarily use everything that, that was offered now, like the, the new advanced smudging and stuff, like that's just not me. Um, but anyways, let's get into this thing. So the reason you saw a head just sort of pop in is because it was from another sketch and I just liked the head, the rest of it was garbage. So I said, hey, let's see if I can do something with that. So I brought the head over and um, started playing with the rest of it. And you could see that uh, uh, this is fairly plain and because it was, because I was just sort of monkeying around. But then as time went on, I, I liked what I was doing with it. And I was like, okay, let's, Let's try and get a little bit more serious about this. So you could see me taking the sketch and trying to tighten it and then deciding like, oh no, this is a big mistake. Let's just go loose and then start painting it. Um, and you can see also here, she's got the dress on at the bottom, but she doesn't have anything. Her hair is just like up. And I was like, okay, maybe she should have some more stuff going on up there. So I eventually add the flower wreath and all that. And so um, that's sort of the genesis of this. As far as painting techniques go, uh, this is very similar to the way I've done a lot of other things to a point, and then I start getting pretty experimental, for me at least. Um, I've had a lot of ideas recently on some techniques, uh, either seeing other people post art and being like, oh, I like the look of that, or trying to think about how I do light in what I paint and trying to, you know, see is there ways that I can expand this further or alter it or improve it or whatever. So here you can see I put those little color blobs in. That was just because I knew I wanted something up there, but I didn't really know what. And now here, I've actually looked up flower wreath reference, and I'm going through and trying to uh, incorporate some flowers in like some more specific details of what these flowers are. I also changed the color of them uh, to be a little more desaturated. And at this point, I'm starting to identify really where I want to take this. I want the whole thing to be really warm. I want it to feel uh, really inviting. I want it to feel like a, a summer day type thing, maybe maybe in the late afternoon, about to be evening. And uh, so everything's eventually going to get like fairly yellow. Um, now. Here's where I'm doing my usual painting method. I'm using a soft brush throughout this entire thing. I just thought that was going to be the way to go. So as I'm painting in all the skin tones, you're gonna see that I actually follow a fairly standard um, skin progression for me. And then I start tweaking it after the fact. So here we've got the body. I have the, the body flat all on one flat and then its layers built up over that. And then I've got the head flat as a separate thing. I always find that that just works out really well for me so that I can make sure that I'm capturing the edge of the jawline with the drop shadow. You don't have to do that and I don't have to do that, but it's just as far as uh, making the process quicker and smoother, that's what I do. So now here I'm just isolating some of the major shapes of the face and painting them in um, in the way that makes sense to me. Um, and then, you know, a lot of that is in different layers, so I'm adjusting here or there. There's a pretty funny moment here where I start painting the lips and I just make it way more complicated than it needs to be and I completely screw up the entire form of the lips and then you'll see I just sort of erase the whole thing and do brand new lips that are way more logical. So here you can see that's a huge mess and there's a lot of little instances in there where it's just like, what the hell was I thinking? Um, and then I just did this and I simplified the entire thing and it was totally the way to go. So another, there's another tip, don't overthink things. Um, so here we are now uh, onto the, the next layer up, the next value up. Um, so that's going to be three, a flat, a mid, and a high. And then I go in and I put in a low just to knock out some of the darker areas. Now, this is where I'm starting to get the idea of what I really want to do. The big tweak to my methods that I do in this version, um, or not in this version, sorry, in this piece, is I light her fairly neutrally, but it, the light is coming from the front of her and as you can see though I've got this big light source behind her so the plan from the get-go was I was going to light her fairly neutrally and then throw a shadow layer on her I've actually done something similar to this in a lot of pieces that I've done but it wasn't the focal point of what I was doing 
For years now, I've done something where I'll render the whole thing, and then if I need a little bit more punch on the shadows, I'll put like a multiply layer and, you know, darken maybe some of the distant side of the figure or something along those lines. In this one, I wanted to take what I had done in my piece tank. If you go back through my past videos, watch the tank video, you'll see that that is a precursor to this, and that's sort of just that iterative learning. So right there you saw it flashing for a second, and that was a color multiply layer. Um, I'm going to break that down very cleanly later, but as this goes on, you're going to see that refine. So what that was, was that was a test for me. That was saying, okay, if I'm going to do this, uh, can I just throw like a, a light purple set to multiply over the whole thing and erase away from it? That's exactly what I ultimately end up doing, but I tweak it quite a bit as time goes on. So um, at this stage, I'm working on the eyes and getting the eyes all uh, sort of detailed up. Um, and this obviously takes a lot of time when you're just doing a portrait. The eyes have a pretty high density of information. So you can also see there's a, there's a lot of uh, uncertainty through aspects of this because whenever you're trying to do something brand new, you sort of start questioning lots of aspects. Is, is the way I normally do eyes going to work in this scenario? Is the way I normally do hair going to work in this scenario? And so there's actually a lot of sort of sub-experimentation going on here, even though the piece as a whole isn't wildly experimental. Um, it, I'm trying a lot of new things. So here you can see I changed my color scheme to be cooler in, well, co sort of cooler all around, but I made the highlights cool instead of being warm and that's because I wanted the skin to be reflectant of the blue that is in front of her because we're going to bring all of that warm light in the um, from the background where that backlight is coming from. So now I'm just tweaking some of my colors for the hair. At this point now that I understand that I'm going to be making those that light coming from the front of her, the reflected light, very blue, I now have to think about that in all of my stuff. How reflective is the material that I'm working with and then how blue should those highlights go. Um, and that's sort of the, the thought process I'm going through with all this. I like to always reference in my videos what I was watching or doing at the time and at this stage in the process I was in a hotel room in Stockholm watching uh, some kind of monster that Metallica video that Metallica documentary which was interesting and uh, so it was just one of those things where I just had it on in the corner of my screen to entertain me while I was uh, painting and I will now forever associate aspects of this with that documentary. Um, so now we're into the hair. Uh, I've painted hair lots of different ways in the past. If you've seen my Pink Hair Girl series, you can see I also have deliberately not painted hair um, at times in the past. Uh, this was actually sort of pulling an older trick out of the book from a long time ago, um, although modified, where I'm basically painting in the larger chunks of the hair um, as, as, you know, following the form and giving them the, this sort of ribboning that happens. Um, but then I'm going in with a smaller brush and giving it a little bit of texture. That might not necessarily come through in this video, but uh, at larger resolutions it does. I also always go in, even on the Pink Hair Girl book, which was all flat hair, and I put in these little flyaways all over um, just to reinforce the fact that even though there are these major shapes, there's they're comprised of little hairs, and that just sort of makes it feel uh, not realistic, obviously, but it, it just sort of makes it feel more like something that we're used to seeing on a regular basis. So now we're moving into the actual rendering of the flowers. Something that wasn't completely exposed to you guys just now was when I went and did the raw flats for these flowers just to sort of block them all in, my layer structure was a mess. And what I sort of did there, the reason why it looked like nothing was going on for a second is because I actually spent some energy just to reorganize all my layers and make sure that my flower layers were all straight and it made the most sense. Um, so I'm working, I believe, from bottom to top in this uh, which is I know is weird because you know you've got that the white flowers are sitting one is sitting under the yellow flower and then another one sitting on top of the yellow flower and then another one's behind the pink flower and, and and then the other one's over the pink flower so it was it was quite a mess in terms of trying to keep my layer count simple if I didn't care about layer count I may even go so far as to have every flower exist on its own set of layers. I mean, I don't know, you can do sort of whatever you want if you're talking about pro, uh, Photoshop limitations. But in Procreate, I wanted to make sure that these were all as straightforward as possible to minimize the 
the I guess like layer debt that I was getting into. So all the white flower flats are together, pink, yellow together, green leaves together. And then on each one of those, there's a folder. They're, they sit within a folder that then has its values above it, if that makes sense. So we've got uh, the white flowers basically painted. They might get a little bit of a tweak later on. We've got the green leaves painted. One of my favorite colors to paint is green, so that was really fun. Um, and then now we're working on the pink roses, uh, which have some more detail to them. Uh, I will go on record right now saying that painting flowers is a nightmare to me, uh, but what I decided to do was try to really hunker down and take my time with them and not rush them because I don't like painting them. So. While, while not perfect, these are probably the best flowers I've ever painted, um, but they could use some work probably still. Um, I think that for the piece, you know, they are only sort of the focal point, so I think that I, they hit the level of fidelity needed for the piece probably. So the roses now are starting to get to their finished state, and then we're going to move on to the, uh, the yellow flowers. Um, and, and these will even continue to get some, some color tweaks as it goes. Uh, even something as simple as taking like the highlight layer and lowering its opacity a little bit just to bring its intensity down. I believe I do that towards the end. Um, so a lot of what I'm painting in here so that I can get the look and feel that I'm looking for, I'm really relying on selections a lot. I'm using the freehand selection tool to sort of select out an area and then switch to the gradient brush to just sort of lightly get that, that fade off in. Um, and that's that's the way to sort of get a mixture of the control along with the the softness of that So now we're on to the yellow flowers. I actually had a bit of a, a Depressing moment where I was in the middle I was wrapping up the yellow flowers And then I realized I hadn't put in all of the like guts of the flower like the the pistol and the stamen or whatever all that shit is so um, at that point I was like ah oh, shit, and I was just trying to come up with the easiest possible way uh, to do that stuff so I eventually developed something that was just fast, nothing worth mentioning, it was just about the structure of how I was painting it and like, okay, I think this will do what I needed to do and get done uh, fairly quickly. So you can see there, there was a big clear that just happened, it sort of shored up a lot of the extra messiness of those flowers, I'm trying to make sure that there's the right amount of knockback. And now here you can see I'm putting in uh, those little dots for the uh, ends of those little things uh, and then I'm putting a little bit of highlight on there and then tweaking how intense that hi highlight is and then going in and putting the stem on all of those little things. Again, I'm not a flower expert. Um, and uh, now there's a little bit of bloom going across just to give that some punch. Now what we've done is we've gone back to that multiply layer and using a mask, I'm going through and altering it in the way where I feel the light is hitting from behind her. Now this multiply layer can be adjusted for color, opacity, in order to try and adjust uh, intensity. It can also be adjusted as far as light or dark. Anything basically can happen to that multiply layer now and it gives me this nice shadowed side of her. Um, that works with that that light in the back Now eventually what I'll do here is I'll create so there's a yellow layer. There's some blur and then I've also Intensified with some yellow paint where the shadow is not touching in order to get a little bit more intensity out of the backlight uh, Now just adding uh, some tweaks on that back hair to make sure that it looks like it's catching the proper shine Because the hair would be slightly shinier than the skin uh, in this setting and uh, Going through and doing a bunch of little tweaks. I'm just tweaky 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 at this point because I really like the way this came out I you know you've always got the one that you might be more proud of regardless of whether or not anybody else uh, digs it and I'm just going through and t trying things and going yeah that works that doesn't work and then pulling some things back and, and removing some things because it got too noisy or something which is what's going on right there on that front strand of hair so this is about to come into a close here on this piece. Um, I, I loved working on this. This one was really fun because I was experimenting. The subject matter was fun. And uh, I think that the, it ultimately came out looking uh, pretty nice. So this right here is the final version with all the color layers and all the tweaks put on it. But you know what? Let's go talk about uh, something else for a second. Uh, let's draw a flesh ball. In this, I'm going to show you exactly how I did that multiply layer trick so that you can see it just a little bit more clearly. 
So we've got a canvas here, fresh canvas, um, and we are going to start by just putting a blob in the center of the screen. Oh, here's the large airbrush I use. All it is is the largest airbrush Procreate offers, but it's set to go a little bit larger. So first we're gonna use the hard brush to just get that blob in the center of the screen. And then uh, we're gonna, in the background, uh, just establish sort of like a rough gradient uh, so that we have an idea of where our lighting might come from. And uh, just to, uh, for the sake of making this consistent with what you just saw, I'll do r roughly the same setup. We're gonna have sort of a gray background with uh, an orange light coming from behind. And then we're going to lower the opacity just to make that a little bit softer. Now in this we're going to end up using the new masking system in Procreate, which I am so happy masking is in. Um, the reason that I specifically use masking instead of just flat out erasing is because when you're dealing with a, a big flat um, color like that, uh, actually it's even better when it's not flat, it's better when it's um, not perfectly flat and you're trying to adjust it. Using the mask makes it so that you're not destroying that layer, which is really nice. So here we're just gonna take this color. I'm gonna stick with the same sort of setup where there's a some blue reflective light coming from the front, and we're gonna try and choose colors around that as best as possible. I then tweak them, of course, as I go. So here's the new interface. You can see some of the new interface in Procreate 4 here. And uh, we're just gonna make this a soft flesh ball. If you watched me back in the days when I used to do live stream or you've seen my flesh ball from back back on, you know, DeviantArt, um, I love drawing flesh balls. I usually make them really disgusting, but for this I just wanted to make it quick. I usually put hair sticking out of it and veins and sores and shit. Right now we're just going to keep it really simple so that we can get to the, the point of this. Okay, so we're starting to get a highlight on there. Again, that value will be adjusted a little bit. I was just sort of flying blind on these colors. Um, I sort of did this really fast thinking to myself, you know, I should really break this down a little bit more so that people understand what I was talking about. And uh, so I just, you know, this is admittedly a little half-assed. Okay, so here we go. We've got the flesh ball. We've got a somewhat blue light on it. And now just to add a little bit more visual interest to it, um, I'm going to add a bump on it. So I'm sampling the bottom most color. Uh, you can see my layer stack here. Uh, this is not as clean as I would normally do it, but I just figured for the sake of this video, it would be nice and quick. So putting a bump there. And then I'm edging off the sharper side of the bump. <laughs> the sharper side of the bump. So now we'll speed up the video here for a little bit because uh, this is all just me basically painting these bumps in. There is nothing special to reference here. Um, the only thing I guess you could say is that uh, what I end up, I, you know, I've got my low, my middle, my high, but then I end up sampling the background gray to uh, Actually, not the background gray, sorry. I sample the bottom edge of the uh, flesh ball and darken it a little bit and add just sort of like this extra oomph to the darkness. And then I put that around the, uh, the bump as well.
right, so now we get our flesh ball. We got two little bumps on it. And what we're gonna do is that multiply trick. So I choose my color. It's usually around here. It's like a light purple or light blue. And then I've selected the whole ball and I filled it in. Now I go to my layers and in the darken category on Procreate, I select multiply. Now you can see it darkened the entire thing right there. Now we will assign a mask to it. So you just tap on it again and then say mask. And now using black or white, you can take away from the mask or add back to the mask. Um, so here what I'm doing is I'm essentially uh, eliminating the part that it is allowing of that shadow to uh, show up. So I'm using black to erase away the mask basically. If I wanted to add the mask back again, I would switch to white and it's going to affect that purpley blue thing right there. So you can see how that mask uh, reveals itself um, in the little thumbnail. And so I've done this, I've created this light behind it. It now has its own light coming from in front of it and then it's emphasizing the light coming from behind by having that shadow in the front. And then I'm going in and adding an extra bit of um, brightness to uh, that backlight uh, on another layer. This one is just using uh, some light yellow, but then here you can see I switch it to overlay and it sort of adjusts how that intensity is. It makes a little, it, it absorbs some of the color from underneath and it has the right fall off. And then I add just a little bit of uh, bloom right here. I also got a little too wrapped up in the bloom and I did a little bit too much and then a little too, uh, too little and then I was like, what the hell am I doing? This is just a quick demo. So um, here's the uh, quick bloom although it could have been quicker. And now I'm just gonna use that top um, multiplied layer and I'm gonna tweak it a little bit so you can take it and you can desaturate it some, you can darken it a little, you can do whatever you want in order to try and sort of match the, the overall colors that you're going for, the lighting of your scene. You can use opacity on it to adjust how much of it is uh, being affected or how intensely it's being affected, I guess I should say, not how much. And just to sort of finish this whole thing off, I'm going to add uh, some bounce light coming from below. So let's put a quick bounce light, or excuse me, like it's like a fill, I guess it's coming from the bottom. And then on top, we'll take that same color and we'll just paint it in real quick. I do that all the time. I accidentally, while I'm still in selection, I'll just do like a stray selection. So just ignore that. <laughs> So now we've got a fairly complex lighting setup, and while it's not, you know, perfectly painted here, you can start to see how all of these different layers can work together. So by doing the sort of local lighting on the, the flesh ball at the very beginning, we have an idea of the form. And now what we're doing is we're saying, okay, there's also a light behind it, and it's creating this main shadow, and then we've got a light coming from underneath it as well. So this could be, for instance, somebody who's in a... Uh, train station and they're walking out of the train station there's an ambient light that's sort of filling everything there's the light from the train station behind them and then there's a street light outside that's causing another light or something like that so this is a way that you can uh think about doing something along these lines and uh, it's kind of gross but i hope you get the point so that is what I used across this piece. That's how I got this look and feel. So you can see how the application can be applied in a simple setting or even more complex. So I hope you guys enjoyed uh, the walkthrough on this. Uh, if you enjoyed it, please consider liking and subscribing. And I'll see you on the next one. And if you're looking for me on the internet, these are the places where you can find me.